So guys, I talked about my favorite movie of all time that I gave a 20 out of 10. Now, time to talk about my second favorite movie of all time that I also gave a 20 out of 10. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone! Welcome back to another movie review. And for today, I'm going to be talking about 1940s Pinocchio. Yes, this is another big movie review that I've been wanting to do for a while because I've, I've, I've mentioned it plenty of times on this channel before that Pinocchio 1940 is my second favorite movie of all time. The Lord of the Rings Return of the King I did a review on that movie, but that is actually one of my highest viewed videos right now. And I'm glad you all, I'm glad you all enjoyed this, so I'm going to talk about my second favorite movie of all time. Yeah, like I said, this is a movie I've been wanting to talk about for a really long time. It's like, it's a film that means so near and dear to me. I think it has just so much to it that make it great, and I'm going to be talking about it all in this review. So, yeah, now, now I got... Pinocchio review. Pinocchio review. Yes, a Disney classic that pretty much, well, it revolutionized Disney and changed it forever. That and Snow White. Yeah, that and Snow White were like Disney's biggest new anime classics. We all know that, yeah. So, yeah. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. Here is my review for Pinocchio 1940. Let's go. So this movie stars Dickie Jones, Cliff Edwards, Christian Rubb, Walter Catlett, and the list goes on. This movie is directed by Ben Sharpstein and Hamilton Lusk. And basically, this movie is the story of Pinocchio. He starts out as this wooden boy who wants to become a real boy. He's created by Geppetto, uh, played by Christian Rubb. And, uh, yeah, Pinocchio, played by Dickie Jones, he basically wants... He basically goes out into this world, he feels... He makes a lot of mistakes because he's supposed to go to school, but he doesn't go to school, and then he gets himself in a lot of trouble, and then that's basically what leads into the uh, the climax of him saving Geppetto, which we all know. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, and Jimmy Cricket, his conscience, basically has to help him, you know, get into the world, understand the world, understand school, understand people, basically understand all the worlds. So, yeah, um, yeah, let's just, let's get right into the positives. The performances, amazing, amazing performances. I cannot, I just, I don't know what to say about the performances, like, the performances, Dickie Jones plays Pinocchio really well. Like, I, I fully felt this kid really wanting to go through, you know, well, he, want, he wants to become a real boy, and I really saw it, and he does such a great job. Cliff Edwards, of course, he does such an amazing job as Jiminy Cricket, of course, when he sings Wish, When You Wish Upon a Star. Yeah. When he sings that song, man, it's, oh, man, it's fucking incredible. He's so amazing as Jiminy Cricket. I love him in this movie. Um, then you got, uh, Christian Rubb as Geppetto, who's also so amazing. I'll, t I'll talk more about Geppetto a little bit later into this review, but, yeah, he's great. Um, the whole cast does such a great job. I really enjoy the voice acting performances. Um, the animation, I, I, what, what, the, the animation is, like, the, what do I need to say about it? It's, Beyond beautiful animation. This is some of the best animation I've seen ever in a film. Like the fucking shots, like how it's how it's made, and like and how all, like how this movie looks. It's like it's like one of the best look, especially from nineteen forty. It's like it's amazing, amazing looking. They put heart and they put effort into the animation. I just, god damn, I. I don't, yeah, but let's just talk. Let's just talk about the story. The story is is I I have to I have to get this right because this 
is one of Disney's, if not Disney's, most important stories. Sometimes Disney can take, you know, such a mature story, a much more, you know, real story. And that's what Pinocchio is. Pinocchio has a really deep and really great writing that is like, it actually develops its characters so well. It's like, Geppetto is a real person. He's a real person. Like, he tends to talk to himself. He tends to, you know, talk to his pets. Like, it's like, he's a sad, lonely man. He has no one to talk to. Sometimes people do stuff like that. And, like, it's perfectly fine. Jiminy Cricket, he's not the best conscience at first, but he learns to keep growing and keep protecting Pinocchio. Oh yeah, and there's a lot of character development. There's so much character development with all the characters. Pinocchio, because he at first when he first born, he he says, "I want to go to school. I want to learn. I want to listen." Whatever he says, but then he gets distracted. He goes off, and then first when he goes to Sh Stromboli, he sees how bad it was, and then he regrets going to Stromboli. He wishes he went to school, but then when he, first he says he's gonna go back, but then. The coachman, when, like when he gets motivated to go to Pleasure Island, he can't help himself. That's a real kid. Sometimes, sometimes there's so much in this world that, like, sometimes kids want to, you know, explore, want to go to like so much fun places. But you gotta, you gotta learn to like, you know, protect yourself. And this movie has such an amazing. This is one of the best messages in a Disney film because it's like. There's amazing messages, like how Watch the Lion King has amazing messages for anyone. But this one, it doesn't tell you the message, but it actually shows you it. Like, it shows you the world and how dangerous it can be for a kid to be out there. Like, Pleasure Island? Pleasure Island is, is like, the place where, like, no kid should ever be. It's like, oh my god, I just... Man, because when they go to Pleasure Island, it's like, because they can, like, literally just, they can smoke cigars, they can drink alcohol, they can do things, basically, they're not allowed to do, just for fun, and that's how, that's just, that alone shows you how this movie is not just, like, kids, it actually develops a good story, and it's darker, because I know a lot of people have talked about how this movie's much darker, and, uh, because it is, it is a much darker film, there's really dark scenes that really show you, like, even in the ending, is like, like, the ending is a beautiful ending, but, like, what happened to the kids? What happened to the kids? Are the kids okay? The kids that got turned to donkeys? It's like, this movie does questions so well. It, like, it puts things in your brain, and it, it's, it shows you, oh my god, yeah, this movie, show me, I shouldn't do that. Yeah, that's how high this movie takes stakes. Like, it actually goes really, really dark. You know, really dark. And I'm not saying no other Disney movie has done that before. Of course, there's plenty of movies that have taken really dark stakes, like Hunchback of Notre Dame, Lion King. Uh, there's plenty of Disney movies that have taken such dark ways, but like this one's such a mystery. Even The Coachman, it's like, like you wonder why he's doing this. He's not really like, he's not really like a main villain. I know many people say he's the villain. In fact. That's just saying up to this whole movie is that there's not really any villain, but there's evil characters like the coachman, like, cause you don't know why he's doing this and it's like, it's so creepy, but he's not really like a main villain. He's just a piece of this piece of the outside world that shows you. Same with Stromboli. It's like, he's a piece of the outside world. These people are bad people and they should be in jail. So yeah, I'll just talk about the direction. I'll just talk about the direction. The direction of this movie is perfect. Like, I mean perfect. It opens, the first 30 minutes of this movie open up with nothing like too high, nothing too convoluted, nothing too far. It's just, it's simple, it's nice, it's chill. You go, you go, you go to the Geppetto's house and you spend some time and it takes 30 minutes for the main plot to get started. And I honestly like that. Because it doesn't, it doesn't expand too much. It's, it's not like, too much for you to handle. No, it's just, you're just chilling with the characters and feeling comfort. Like, you know, it's like a good, chill, comfort vibe. And it, it's, it goods, it gets you into the, it, what I'm trying to say is it basically gets you into the characters so you can root for them in the story. So, 
Yeah, like, because, like, how it introduces Pinocchio, how it introduces Jiminy Cricket, how it introduces Geppetto, like, you know, seeing them all, like, so happy, nothing too bad's going on, like, that's, that alone, just, like, it's such heartwarming, it's just so, it's just so nice to watch, man, it really gets, it really gets you into the movie, and sometimes you need to expand the opening, like, you know, I mentioned in my Lord of the Rings reviews how you got, sometimes you just gotta stretch it out, take time, you don't need to rush into the plot, you can just take time, get into the characters, then you can root for them. If you just rush right into the plot, how am I supposed to root for the characters? I want to be able to at least get to know them before the journey starts. And that's what the opening of Pinocchio does so well. Um, and then in the direction, like, after the next day when the journey starts, Pinocchio says he's going to go to school. Um, but Jimmy Cricket uh, made a mistake, and he tries to rush to Pinocchio to basically, well, be his conscience, like, like we all know. And, and, um, sorry, I have a little sore throat right now, so I'm not, I'm, like, kind of struggling to whew, talk a little bit, but, um, doing the best I can, doing the best I can. I wanted to get this review out for you guys, so, yeah, um, where was I? Oh, yeah, Pinocchio said he was going to go to school, and Geppetto, uh, wanted to show him to follow the kids to go to school, and basically... Give him, tell his teacher, tells her that he wants to be a real boy, he wants to learn how to be a real boy. So, um, yeah, he makes a mistake, and he gets distracted, even when Jimmy Cricket tells him, you should not go to the theater, you should go to school, he still can't help himself, because he's just a kid. Normal kids at this age, because, like, you know, when they never went to school yet, normal kids are not going to fully understand the world yet, and I know some people might question, is this, like, Okay, why is it Pinocchio's fault? Well, I think just because it's like when they when when they when they told him, he really wanted to go to school. He said he was, he promised he was, but he made a mistake and he caused himself into trouble. That's why he learned. And remember the famous lying scene when he lied? It's like it has such great character development and yeah, that's why the Blue Fairy also had to had to talk some sense in him because it's like Pinocchio, you should have gone to school because you need to learn this stuff, and that's, and he starts to lie, but he's a kid, he's a kid, he makes mistakes, so yeah, but yeah, the direction of this movie is just like it builds and builds up into the climax, it develops the characters, it does it all so well, and has great message, it ha it has also just such great like you know. It has so many great, like, different, like, it gives you different feels. It, like, it can be funny, it can be, it can have so much heart, it can have a lot of horror aspects, it can have a lot of emotion, it has meta develop. it develops the characters, it develops the story, is the story, and it takes stakes that was, like, so high that I feel like not a lot of Disney movies do. It actually goes really, really dark. So I, I heard people sometimes got nightmares of this movie, because it's like, what the fuck happened to the kids? What the fuck happened to the kids? It's just like, yeah. The score is incredible. The characters are incredible. The animation is incredible. Everything about this movie is just incredible for me. And that's why it is my second favorite movie of all time. It's such an amazing movie. Um, there, are so many, I, there are so many movies in my favorite Disney movies that could change. But this always stays my number one. Always stays my number one. Is what is my all one of my all time favorite movies, right up there with Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, and that's why a rare rating I give. But I'm gonna give Pinocchio 1940 a 20 out of 10. This movie, absolute masterpiece, <sighs> one of my favorite movies of all time. I actually legit think I will legit say it is the objectively greatest Disney movie of all time. I know it's not for everyone because trust me, I know I know people that aren't a fan of this movie, and that's fine. It's just opinions. If you're not a fan of Pinocchio, that's fine. That's fine. It's it it it, it doesn't bother me. We all just have our own opinions. If you if you think this movie's not the best Disney movie, it's fine. It's fine. I have no problem with that. I'm just gonna stick to my opinion. 
I think this movie is a masterpiece, and to me, it is the greatest Disney movie of all time. But, we all have our own opinions, so that's perfectly fine. So, yeah. Uh, so, they, yeah, there you go. I'll wrap it up for my review of Pinocchio 1940. Let me know in the comment section below. What are your guys' thoughts and opinions on this movie? Give me your thoughts and opinions on this movie down below in the comments. Um, stay tuned, as usual, stay tuned for more videos that I got planned coming soon, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, hope you all enjoyed this video, thank you all for watching, please like and subscribe, and see y'all next time, bye!